You have until December 4th to see an exhibit at Union Station featuring works of two artists. One was an Iowa-born American known across the country for his historical and allegorical murals. The other immigrated from Eastern Europe, settled in St. Louis, and is best known as a conservator and restorer of paintings. It is, in fact, a restoration project that was the catalyst for the exhibit. Mounted behind the main desk of the St. Louis Union Station Hotel is the mural Commerce on the Landing by Louis Grell. The mural is spread over three panels and depicts a bustling Mississippi riverfront in the late 19th century. Commerce on the Landing was commissioned in 1942 and was originally displayed above Union Station's ticket counter. But at some point, the mural was taken down, stored away, and for decades was forgotten. Then, in the spring of 2014, during a major renovation of the station and hotel, the panels were found by construction workers behind a false wall. Union Station owners called on Codner Gallery for help to restore the work, and Codner in turn enlisted artist and restorer Eric Salak. When I saw the painting for the first time, I noticed that the painting got a lot of, uh, a lot of damages to the surface of the varnish and surface of the paint layer. Restoring the mural was a complicated, time-consuming process. At Silag's North St. Louis County studio, special construction was created to hold the large panels in a position that would let him reach every square inch. His first task was to find the proper solvents to remove the dark film built up over the years by customers smoking around Union Station's ticket counter. Photos that document the restoration show the dramatic difference when the smoky layer was removed. Zillag also took off a layer of reddish-brown paint applied across the bottom of the panels during a poor restoration in the 1980s. The original paint is on the right. But Zillag's biggest challenge may have been repairing the damage from vertical scratches that ran the length of the panels. I think that those scratches uh, were done by the people who tried to clean the painting, not really in professional way. Uh, so because I don't know how it's happened, but maybe the managers of the Union Station at the time asked the people who, who cleaned the window also to clean the painting. So because the, the painting was installed over the, uh, the ticket counter. It took six months of meticulous repairing and touch-ups. But by the end of the summer of 2015, the 7 by 28 foot mural was returned to a place of prominence in the historical structure for which it was painted. We've known of Eric as an exceptional restorer and an exceptional painter as well. So, you know, it's one thing to have the book smarts uh, in knowing how to, to do restoration uh, and knowing the chemistry, but if you don't have the artistic talent to apply those skills, uh, it can get lost. So Eric has both the skills and the knowledge, uh, which benefits him as a conservator. The restoration project inspired Jonathan Codner to curate an exhibit of paintings by both Louis Grell and Eric Salag. And we'll show you in just a moment. First, a few words about the noted muralist and portrait painter whose career spanned more than half of the 20th century. Louis Frederick Grell III was born in Council Bluffs, Iowa in 1887. His father owned a meat market and his mother had a talent for fashion design. Grell's artistic abilities first became evident when he was just a toddler, and by the age of eight, he was painting better than his art teacher. That convinced Grell's family to send him to Hamburg, Germany, to live with his grandmother and study at the most respected art academies in Europe. He was 12 years old and an undeniable prodigy. Grell combined his studies with traveling the continent and exhibiting his paintings. 
He earned commissions creating murals in lavish homes and commercial buildings alongside one of his professors. Grell is shown here in a photo of Munich's exclusive American Artists Club. He returned to the U.S. after the country entered World War I and found work in New York City designing sets for Broadway shows. Grell's first domestic mural commission was in Salt Lake City, Utah in 1907 during a break from his European studies. He took over a project to be displayed at the Utah State Fair, a mural depicting the Mormons entering the Great Salt Lake Basin. It was so large, Grell hired two assistants to help him complete it. Grell eventually settled in Chicago and became a professor of commercial drawing and figure composition at the Academy of Fine Arts. For two years during that period, he taught a high school student who would go on to become a legend in the field of animation, Walt Disney. Grell later taught at the Art Institute of Chicago, and in 1934, he left to make his art his full-time career. Grell and his wife, Frederica, whom he married in 1922, made their home in Chicago's famous Tree Studio resident artist colony. By the time of his death in 1960, Grell produced some 300 murals in commercial structures and churches, many in the Midwest, plus hundreds of smaller easel works. The Codner Gallery assembled 18 Louis Grell watercolor and oil paintings for the exhibit in the Mall of St. Louis Union Station. The opportunity we had working with the Louis Grell Foundation was we were able to secure artworks really creating a mini retrospective, so to speak. So we had a nice variety of works representing different periods of his life, as early as his self-portrait from the teens into his works uh, nearing at his uh, passing, uh, the work uh, of the art fair in Chicago from 1960, and he passed away in 1960. So it was an exceptional example shortly before he passed away. Uh, not only did he have a long career, but he was consistent in his talent and ability throughout his career, which is nice to see. Many times we see artists as they age, they begin to lose their eyesight and their hand coordination, and um, it appears that throughout his, uh, his uh, career, he kept that consistency, which is nice to see. Paintings by the artist who restored Grell's Union Station mural make up the other half of the show. Eric Stalag is a native of Poland who made St. Louis his home nearly 30 years ago. Uh, the connection of the fantastic, fantastic parks and greenery and, and all trees and everything with the architecture makes it unique and makes it very nice. And this is why I, I found so many interesting places in St. Louis that I decided that I, I have to paint them. A few days after seeing the exhibit, we received a phone call from a Webster Groves man who heard we were working on this story. He told us he owns a Lewis Grell painting, and when he described it, we just had to come see for ourselves. This is dubbed Captain Electricity by owner and graphic artist David Bartels. He says it was a study for a mural Grell intended for the 1933 Chicago World's Fair, but the mural was never made. It's got a superhero quality to it, you know, and 
I think that was part of what attracted me to it. It was just the, the power of it and the energy of it. Bartels adds the painting isn't his only connection to the artist. Back in the day, which is 30 some years ago, living in Chicago, I lived in the Tree Studios. This gallery, the Romano Gallery, was below the studio that I occupied. And um, this piece hung in there along with maybe half a dozen other Grell paintings. It just uh, kept growing on me and I said, uh, I'd like to own that thing. So I, um, I bought it. And David Bartels pointed us to two Depression-era murals in the former manufacturer's bank and trust in Soulard. The building now houses the Lift for Life Academy. This one, called American Pride, and this, Steel Men, were intended to reassure bank employees and customers that better economic times lay ahead. The Lewis Grell Foundation is trying to locate as many of the artists' works as possible to maintain a cultural legacy of which St. Louis is a beneficiary.